Japanese and domestic automakers typically bring out a brand new model every four years, but German automakers, they wait longer. It's usually six to seven years for a brand new model. But what they do do partway through the model cycle is refresh the car, give it a facelift, and typically add in new engine options. And that's always fun. This is the BMW 5 Series. It was last introduced. This is the E60 model, by the way, in 2004. So here we are at 2008, and under the hood is the tasty inline six-cylinder twin-turbo engine we first drove in the 335 and loved it. you got to check out that review at drivingtelevision.com. More on the engine in a moment. First, let's have a look at the 5 Series and see what they've done right with the refresh and what could still use updating. BMW did refresh the outside. The front has had the lights slightly tweaked. The same is true for the back lights. I'm really hard pressed to even notice the difference, but whatever they've done, the car looks more cohesive. I'm still not a fan of the line that separates the trunk from the rear quarters. I also think the car looks a little bland with the lack of any body molding, but the shape is a slight improvement and the stance looks a little better. Well, I've said it before on the show, I've owned my fair share of BMWs and I currently have an X5 parked in front of my house. But a few years ago when BMW radically changed the way they produced their cars, it left me a little cold. I really dislike the iDrive computer interface system that forces the driver to engage with a computer to change radio, heat and car settings. I've given this system a chance over the last several years and I still don't like it. That's one of the reasons that I love the BMW 3 Series so much. You don't have to get iDrive. With the 5 Series you do. BMW, once again, please make iDrive an option. Well, BMW has tweaked the inside as well, but it's very minor. They've moved the power window buttons on the driver's door to a much more useful place. They've upgraded the interior materials a tad, which is welcome because the previous version was very stark. It's still not a great interior design in my opinion, but I have to hand it to BMW. These are very, and I mean very, comfortable seats. In fact, on this model, they're actually called comfort seats. And in the back, it's roomy and comfortable back there as well. The problem with the back seats, they don't fold down. And I took this car to Ikea for their super sale. And I barely got all my stuff in the car. So note to self, take a Volvo to Ikea. Another thing that's a problem is there is next to no room in the center console. The cup holders that pop out of the dash are not that stable and you end up spilling your drink most of the time. The addition of the new electronic gear selector doesn't free up any more space. When Mercedes went to an electronic gear selector, they stuck it on the steering column, which made room in the center of the car, but not BMW. BMW seems to change for change's sake. Does iDrive make it a better driving experience? No. Does an electronic shifter make it a better driving experience? No. But what BMW does better than most manufacturers is produce fabulous cars to get out on the open road. And this new Refresh 5 Series is a delight. So let's go for a spin. So a little while ago, I'm emceeing this charity event and a guy corners me, comes up to me and he says, why are you so pro BMW? You know what? I've got a Mustang, whatever. And he says it's cheaper and it's faster than most BMWs. Why do you always give them so much credit? And I said, well, you have to drive a BMW to actually appreciate what they can do. The 3 Series BMW and this 5 Series BMW are the benchmarks in their class. Every other manufacturer in the world is trying to catch up to the 3 and 5 Series for their driving dynamics, the way they go down the road, the handling, the presence they have, and the information that it relays back to the driver. You just don't get that in most cars, and they're all just trying to catch up. So you only have to spend a little bit of time behind the wheel of one of these cars to realize that they really are something special. Just when the competition starts to get close to BMW, they come out with something better. This 535 has a 3 liter inline 6 cylinder under the hood with two small turbochargers that eliminate any kind of turbo lag. There is 300 horsepower available under your right foot and 300 pound feet of torque that comes on at 1500 RPM. It's the best engine that I've driven in years and was recently awarded the Engine of the Year Award. When we had the 335 on the show last season, it came with a manual transmission. This 535 is equipped with a shiftable automatic. In regular D, it does an okay job around town, but if you really want to optimize the hot new engine, then all you have to do is slide the new shifter into sport mode and the tranny does all the work. 
What a lot of people don't realize is that the 335 sedan is only 30 kilograms lighter than the 535 sedan. That's because they utilize more aluminum components building the 535. So if you want a comfortable mid-sized vehicle that has all of the same go as the 3 Series, but it's bigger, this is the BMW to get. Well, this inline six cylinder engine in this 535 is so powerful and linear. There's no turbo lag. It's really a gem. And as I said off the beginning, one of the best engines I've driven in years. It's so good, in fact, that I don't think many people are going to opt to get the V8. This car does it all and actually has the same amount of power as the previous generation V8 models have. Now, this particular car is equipped with the active steering. It's very sensitive and it takes a little while to get used to. And to be honest with you, I'd save the money and I'd probably pass on it. It's been about a year since I've driven a 5 Series from BMW and you kind of forget. Then you get back in the car and you realize very quickly that yes, this really is the best mid-size car on the planet. Well, BMW has done it again. They've taken an already impressive machine and made it that much better. I bet you that the 535 will be the best seller in the 5 Series range, even at a starting price of $68,900. I can't wait to see what they have up their sleeve for the next entirely new 5 Series. I just hope that BMW has been taking some notes. For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com.